Mindful mentions is meant to showcase something or someone that is top of mind for me at the moment. And today I want to share with you a phenomenal organization in the space of EQ or emotional intelligence called Six Seconds. When I first began my EQ journey, I went to Google to find additional resources and stumbled across Six Seconds. While there are other websites out there focused on emotional intelligence, I found that the majority of them give you a brief overview of what emotional intelligence is, a list of benefits of emotional intelligence, and then offer you like an EQ assessment or some type of training or certification. And that isn't all that helpful for those of us looking to take a deeper dive and find additional resources or support around the subject. What I found different and intriguing about Six Seconds was the depth and array of information and resources that they offered around emotional intelligence. Six Seconds offers case studies, articles, training, workshops, conferences, networking events, and physical tools and resources for all ages and stages of life. I'm not going to lie, when I went to the site, it was a bit overwhelming because there's just so much information to digest, but in a good way. Six Seconds is also a global organization with EQ ambassadors that you can connect with around most major cities in the world. I really can't rave about them enough. And here's a fun fact slash story. About six months after discovering Six Seconds on Google, I had my first conversation with Bruce Cryer, which was the guy from last week's Mindful Mention Monday. I was telling Bruce about my business and my passion for emotional intelligence, and he said, there are a couple people in the space of EQ that I want to introduce you to. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. One of them was Joshua Freeman, and he is the CEO of six seconds. And when Bruce told me this, he was like, yeah, Josh is the CEO of this organization called six seconds. I was like, oh my gosh, I know six seconds. I love six seconds. They have been such an invaluable resource for emotional intelligence for me. So I was beyond thrilled now that I get to meet the CEO of this amazing organization. And when Joshua and I had our first call, I could tell right away what a kind-hearted, people-centered person he was. Joshua and I had several more conversations, and then when my book launched in September 2020, Joshua agreed to be part of my virtual book tour. How cool is that, right? So to provide you with a bit more insight about the man behind Six Seconds, I'm going to share a few clips from Joshua's time on the book tour with me. On this tour, we also had a moderator, Blair Premis. So if you hear a male voice chime in, that is our moderator, Blair. Also, just as I did last week for Bruce Cryer, I will play a chime to alert you when I transition to another portion of the conversation for those of you who are listening and not watching. So here's Joshua Freeman. Josh Friedman, take it away. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, so accomplished, you've done so much. Uh, Before we got live, we were chatting about all the great places and people that you've uh, been talking to virtually across the world. So um, please, a little bit of a background for you and for the group listening and for people um, tuning in today. Well, I got interested in emotional intelligence when I was a teacher, which feels like a very long time ago. Time ago. In 1992, I met Daniel Goleman when he came and he visited the school where I was teaching. And he saw the process we did there for supporting kids to understand their own emotions and the, and the way they could make better choices. Awesome. And he said, hey, you know what you guys are doing is teaching emotional intelligence. Mm. And it, it really speaks to what Brittany Nicole was just talking about. Um, I don't think it's so useful, whether we're talking about kids or adults, to say, you know, you should do this or you should do that. If we can have better skills for making decisions and for understanding how do we assess where we are and how do we understand the implications of the different options that we have, and then have the wherewithal to actually step forward in a way that's aligned with our our goals. 
So that's what I learned back then. In, in 1995, Dan's book came out and uh, became an international bestseller. And he'd written about self-science, which was our process, mm. the science of studying yourself. And um, in 1997, we started Six Seconds to help people understand how you actually put emotional intelligence into action. Not what it is, but how. Mm. And now we work in over 200 countries. We work with huge businesses and tiny little organizations and um, schools and government agencies. And all of that is around integrating the, the science of emotional intelligence into a way that's practical, into a way that people can bring that in, as Brittany Nicole said, and, and I think you said too, Blair, into our daily lives, not as like, oh, I'm going to go you know, use my emotional intelligence. And it's then time to pull out my emotional intelligence wand. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's really about daily life. And and we we talk about the idea of practicing. Mm. And, uh, our vision is a billion people practicing emotional intelligence. Wow, awesome. That practice, uh, we can talk more about later, but it's really easy. Um, it's, not, it's not a complex theory, but what's hard is to do it consistently. Where did, where did the desire for this come from? Well, I was a poster child for not uh, being mm. <laughs> prepared for this. Play. There you go. <laughs> I told Brittany Nicole before, you know, I grew up being afraid of emotions. Mm. Um, my parents were both statisticians. Um, yeah. You know the joke about um, the difference between an introverted statistician and an extroverted statistician? No. An extroverted statistician looks at your shoes when they're talking to you. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so, I mean, my own experience was I, I didn't like to ask people how they were feeling mm. because, yeah. you know, God forbid they might tell me. And then, like, what if they cried, you know, or what right. if they, what do you what do if now? they were mad at me, you know, oh. and then. And I had, I think there are probably a, a lot of people who experience this. I had this sense that it was going to be like Pandora's box. And if I was in a meeting and I could look around in the meeting and see somebody was upset, like, oh, I better not, I hope they don't talk because, you know, we're going to get into this thing and then it's just going to get out of control. So I was a reluctant student of emotional intelligence. Right. Fascinating. And that's part of why I, I think I take such a data-oriented approach to this and really trying to understand kind of an IQ approach to EQ. But, you know, I feel for those physicians who are like, I've been trained, I know the procedures, uh, why, are pe why aren't people just more rational? You know, I tell my patients what to do, why don't they just do it? But this... You know, if we really want to be rational, we have to confront the reality that we're not just rational. I don't know how many times either of you have been in a meeting with somebody who's like, can we just be rational about this? Yes, let's break down. Like, right. um, exactly. Yes, let's do right. that. Yes. Given how emotional you just got asking us to be rational, that should tell us something, right? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. As opposed to like more of a serene, calm conversation and saying, if we can introduce some rational thinking here, right? That's almost never the case. Even in the workplace, if you think, oh, yeah, let's have people leave emotions out. Um, and you could, you know, you, whether this is in a medical practice or anywhere else, like, okay, so do we want to leave out trust? Mm. Do we want to leave out curiosity? Thank you. Yeah. Do we want to leave out passion? Mm. Do we want to leave out caring for each other mm, right we leave out innovation do we want to leave out loyalty like all of those things are driven by emotion mm. very true yeah yeah so i don't think we want to actually you know even the most kind of die hard let's be rational person you know when it comes to like well in our customer relationships and our employee relationships we don't actually want to leave it out right right well, I just, so many things came to mind as you were talking. Uh, one thing is we did some research on how long it takes to really integrate emotional intelligence. Mm, okay. And, um, it's like four years. Is it? Wow. So 
Uh, <laughs> and and so, give me the high level. Why? Why four years? Well, it's because it's easy to start. Yeah. Okay, as I said, um, you know, we, we have a lot of case studies that involve, you know, two days of training and maybe a little coaching. And we see like a 12 to 15% increase in emotional intelligence in just mm -hmm. that. And that is tremendous. Like the difference that makes is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite um, research studies, we unfortunately we don't have this on our website right now. I have to uh, try to get this on there. But um, Sue McNamara, who leads Six Seconds in Asia Pacific, did research with parents. And um, she also did research with teachers and the effect of the adults practicing EQ on the kids. No, mm -hmm. no direct training to the kids. And uh, surprise, no, no surprise, right? Tremendous difference. Yeah. Sure. But reading the parents' journals, oh. it just it was such a, just a beautiful and visceral, like, wow, what a difference 10% increase in EQ makes. You know, you go from the kind of normal transactional, like, why didn't you do your homework, you know, fighting about nonsense yeah. to like, oh, let's actually solve problems and work together. Mm. So it's really significant. Right. But <laughs> that is not the same as what you're talking about, really making this part of our culture and our work. Yeah. And I think part of the challenge of emotional intelligence is the ubiquity every single interaction every yeah. relationship wow. and we're, you know we're talking about thousands and thousands of interactions yeah. so the discipline right mm -hmm. to, 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 to really look at it at a systemic level and so we look we look at three levels one is the individual what's going on inside me the second is the relational and each of these different relationships that I have as a person or as a leader or somebody in an organization. And then the organizational and mm -hmm. look at our culture and our systems and our structures and how do we how do we hire? How do we promote? How do we give feedback? What are our norms? Um, those three levels are all measurable. Wow. And at all three of those levels, there is work and learning and implementation we can do. But that's, you know, that adds up to a lot of work. Yeah. But, I mean, the organizations, we have several case studies about organizations that have worked on this for multiple years. And the impact is tremendous on retention, on customer service, on sales, on bottom line performance. So, you know, as Brittany and Nicole said, if you're looking for a quick fix, I mean, yeah. sure, you can get a little benefit from you know, a quick emotional intelligence training. But if you actually want to create something different where you're really making this part of your culture, it's gonna take a significant commitment, but, yeah. the, but it will make a tremendous difference. Sure, for sure. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm curious about what your sense is about generational differences on this. I, I've seen um, we have some data, um, but I'm I'm curious in your you know in, in your conversations with people who are a little older and a little younger, what's the different responses about this concept of emotional intelligence? Are you asking me or Blair? Yeah, yeah. I'm asking okay. you. Um, <laughs> you know, like so. I don't I don't know. Um, I've spoken with a lot of people that are, is it Gen Gen X that's right below baby boomer? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so Gen X, baby boomers who are actually fairly open to it when I explain it. And then there's people my age who don't really know what emotional intelligence is. Some do. It's kind of a mix. Um, I don't, I don't have the data there, so I don't want to say, oh, well, this is how it is, because I really don't know. I get, you know, different feedback from different people. I have some people that are older people who are very receptive to it, and I have some people that aren't. Um, but I think 
I think that a lot of older generations feel that they are more emotionally intelligent than younger generations because they had that face-to-face -face interaction. Life was much slower. They didn't have all the distractions in life where younger generations, it seems to be more disconnected. Huh. In my personal opinion and from observations, I don't think that older generations are necessarily more emotionally intelligent. I think they're more well-behaved and they understand yeah. <laughs> how to be polite. But as I write in my book, being polite does not equal emotional intelligence. Right. So right. that's my opinion on the, on the matter. I think they're more yeah. polite and know the right things to say, but don't yeah. necessarily, because they gossip more. I feel like the older generations, like I'll always be around them and they're like, do you know what Betty Sue and John were doing? <laughs> So. I notice my, my mom is always wanting me to tell her about my kids. And I'm like, oh, talk to them yourself. You know? Talk to them. Exactly. Right. Give them a call. Right. Especially nowadays. Yeah. What is um what is your take on it, Josh, on, on the generational um, um impact? Well, we did some we did some research on it. We 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 published something called State of the Heart. So we have two big research studies that we do. One I mentioned before is the uh, organizational vitality, right. the state of the heart. And um, with the pandemic, we're delaying uh, state of the heart until um, next year. But um, we've started looking at this, this year's data. Um, what we find is there's not a lot of correlation between emotional intelligence and age. Mm. Um, in our model, we have, we have three parts basically being aware, being intentional, being purposeful. That third part is a little more correlated with age, just okay. a tiny bit correlated with age. And again, it kind of makes sense. Like as you get older, again, that's a large sphere of concern. You have more people that you know, you have grandkids or whatever. Yeah. Um, the middle part, being more intentional, uh, responding instead of reacting, Mm. Zero correlation with age. But uh, at the same time, I've noticed, and it just may be who I've been hanging out with, but um, when I started doing this work, I'd get on an airplane and you know, somebody would say, what do you do? And I'd say, you know, I teach emotional intelligence. And they'd say, emotional what? Yeah, right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I'll be a therapist. Get away from me. Yeah. <laughs> And now um, what I find is people under, I don't know, 35, something like that. Um, when I say I teach emotional intelligence, they, they say, oh, that's so needed now. Mm. So yeah. that's not statistical data. <laughs> right. it's anecdotal, but yeah. But, but it's meaningful, right? It's directional, yeah. You know, Josh, what do you think about the future for us? You know, five years, 10 years down the road, what are we... What are some actions we can take now? What are some things we should be thinking about for the future? Well, I think that we're at an inflection point mm. in human history. And my hope is, you know, that we come out of this pandemic and we come out of the era that we're in and we say it's time for us to take ownership of our own lives, take ownership mm. of building healthy communities and healthy relationships. Uh, my fear is that we continue down this road of blame and polarization. Mm. Uh, and probably we're going to do both, you know, some of each. Um, yeah. But for myself, like I want, what I want in my own life is to be able to look in the mirror at the end of the day and say, you know, I'm doing my part to make the world a better place. It's great. And, um, you know, I think we have in access to a ton of tools to help us do that. And um, it's time for us to, to learn this, learn this language and learn about ourselves and learn about each other and really figure out how we work and, and use that. Um, yeah. And be open to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's and great. Speaking of tools. I'm telling you, six seconds <laughs> is a phenomenal reason. No, seriously. I mean, you have everything I can think of that you would need to develop your emotional intelligence. Six seconds has that. Um, and you can get training too, you know, 
through you guys. So it goes all the way from children all the way up to corporate. You And like you were saying earlier, you help anyone and everyone that needs or is interested in developing their emotional intelligence. So I will put all that information in the show notes because nice. I love it. It's a tremendous resource. I love it. I hope you found some value in today's segment. You can learn more about six seconds and all they have to offer by going to six seconds.org. And that is the number six, not spelt out. So it's six seconds.org. And you can find that in the show notes and click the link there as well. And I will also provide you with the link of the full book tour video featuring Josh Freeman with our moderator, Blair Primus. That is all for today's episode of Mindful Mention Monday. I hope you'll join me tomorrow for Q&A with Brittany. But until next time, live and lead with an open heart and open mind. Thanks for watching.